we have an acronym, an acronym called MALT. So what does that mean? That stands for mucus associated lymphatic tissue. So mucus associated lymphatic tissue, MALT. So one of the things about this um, is when we look at the mucous membranes, we think of, say, for example, the throat, even the mouth, even the nose, right? The esophagus, like even the digestive system um, has mucus lined um, uh, structures in it. And these are all areas that are particularly vulnerable to infection and invasion by pathogens. So if you think about your nose and your mouth, breathing and taking in food, you're taking in pathogens all the time. And so might it not be a good idea to set up structures at those entryways to help prevent infection? The other thing is, is that if we look at our digestive system, some um, people who study the digestive system actually kind of think of it as being external to our body. So we have this body and then we have this system that is running through our body and it is exposed to all kinds of things from the outside. And um, so it could almost be viewed as something that is external to our bodies in general. And so we need some mechanisms to help prevent invasion and infection by microbes. This is also a really good place when we talk about our digestive system that we note that there are good microbes as well as bad microbes and the good microbes are super beneficial to our body so we can kind of use the lymphatic tissue to help promote the good microbes and to help fight off the bad microbes okay so if we look at where this is located um, and what it contains one thing that it includes would be the tonsils and it's really important to realize that these are different from lymph nodes. Lymph nodes filter lymph. Tonsils just sit there waiting for microbes to enter them and for them to be able to recognize them and then to launch an immune response. So we might get swollen glands, which are lymph nodes, but we also might get swollen tonsils, which are actually just responding to um being infected and they actually are their structure actually they want to be exposed and infected in order to uh, uh, alert the rest of the immune system that this is present in our environment okay so if we look at the tonsils we have more tonsils than you would think of um, we actually have the palatine tonsils, which your palate is the upper roof of your mouth. So these are the ones that we think about that get big, right? We also have pharyngeal tonsils, which are up near our nasal cavity. These you might have heard referred to as the adenoids. And then lingual. What does lingual mean? That means tongue. And so if you've ever been really sick, maybe the back of your tongue even gets swollen and sore. And so that is a sign that that tonsil is doing its job. When we look at the, the tonsils, they are super interesting in their structure because they have these crypts. So this is like an open and boy, that looks like microbes could enter there and that might look like a bad thing, but these tonsillar crypts actually help to take in microorganisms and so that they can be analyzed. And so we have these germinal centers which have white blood cells that help in breaking down the microbes and then analyzing them and then maybe even um, initiating an adaptive immune response, which is a learned immune response. Sometimes these crypts in some people get infected themselves and you can, and also there's debris that can get stuck in there. So you might have heard of tonsil stones. Um, so you might have like debris that gets stuck in there and then they look like white little structures inside of the tonsils 
And oftentimes people have this and it causes problems. So they might be permanently kind of have these tonsil stones and the tonsil stones will occasionally come out and their tonsils will bleed, right? And so in the past, um, we uh, thought that the tonsils weren't all that important. And so when I was a kid, people were getting their tonsils removed all the time for what was called tonsillitis. And we now realize that tonsils are actually a really important part of our immune system. And we don't take out tonsils unless they are kind of permanently infected. That becomes a problem. And um, or if you have problems, chronic problems with tonsil stones, then they might remove the tonsils. But if you think about it, if you have removed tonsils, that actually increases your likelihood that maybe you will get a lower respiratory infection in the lungs. And so that's not necessarily a good thing. But I know people, including my own children, that have to have their tonsils removed. So that is one structure within the malt would be the tonsils. So the pharyngeal, the palatine, and the lingual tonsils. We also have um, what is referred to as the Pyers patches. And these are like little structures in the lining of the small intestine. So the small intestine is actually um, super important because this is where we absorb, ooh, absorb our nutrients. And so that lining of the small intestine needs to be needs to have infection prevention, right? So that is one place where we have malt. We also have um, coming off of the first part of the large intestine, the appendix. So it is like a finger like projection off of a part of your small intestine or your large intestine called the cecum. And um, it is actually really important in um, immunity as well. But sometimes it gets infected and when it ruptures, it can be life threatening. So a ruptured appendix would spill bacteria into your abdominal cavity. And then you would get, have this massive like infection and you could get sepsis um, where the bacteria produce toxins. And so you have to have that all flushed out if your appendix ruptures. And so sometimes they remove the appendix, but they don't do it just because um, it has to be um, a good reason for uh, removing the appendix. So if we look at these structures, these are our Peyer's patches and there's these lymphoid nodules in the small intestinal wall. I think Peyer's patches, um, maybe that's named after the person that discovered them probably. And then, oops, we have the spleen, but we also have, oh, I guess I don't have a picture of the appendix, but the appendix comes off of the, um, of the cecum of the large intestine. So that is the malt, super important for protecting against infection.